I'm no longer living where Michigan Technological University is. I live much farther south now because I re retired during the pandemic. Um, Doug recently came to visit me. I now live only about five and a half hours from Doug. So he drove over to see me during our tulip time because I live in Holland, Michigan. And this is the only authentic um, Dutch windmill that's not in the Netherlands. They did add this um, uh, brick layer on the bottom to raise it up high enough to catch the wind. And they do grain, um, they do ground wheat and um, corn there. You can purchase it if you like. Do come and visit, it's kind of an interesting thing. Anyway, so. <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about designs with those parameters. And by those I mean, let's see, this thing works. That didn't do anything. I thought you guys got this nice bright light. How did you do that? Oh well. All right, you want me to use that? Sure. Um, so, okay, so um, <clears throat> it's on D points and it consists of four and six element subsets, which for this talk I'm going to call tetrads and hexads, although I might say quadruples instead of tetrads. Um, every three element subset is covered exactly once. Now, Asmos and Sardi in 1981 defined a one of these designs would be homogeneous, which is not the same homogeneous that Spiros used in his talk. It's unfortunate. Homogeneous, if the tetrads and hexads are each one designs, and there are precisely V hexads. And they prove that if a homogeneous um, 34461 exists, then it has the same conditions as a quadruple system. V is two or four mod six. And V has to be at least 16. And uh, there's a unique one when V is equal to 16. And I suppose um, that's going to be the motivation. But the hexads are a symmetric one design. Since they're a symmetric design, they could be a geometry, they could be a biplane, they could be a symmetric biplane. They could be a two class partially balanced and complete block design. So this means that every pair is in lambda one or lambda two hexads. Um, the ones that are lambda one are first associates. The ones that are, in, are lambda two are second associates. And so they make, they make a, an association scheme. We won't worry about that, I guess. Try to hurry along. I'm gonna say one, is, one of these designs is special if the automorphism group is transitive and if the hexads form a geometry. Now, you might want to advise me that there are other geometries I should be looking at, but these are the ones that I thought of. So here's the um, mandatory um, Canadian French English page. Um, Camille Jordan, in, um, 19, in 1869, displayed this four by four rectangle and wrote down this li list of, so these are, think of them as variables. This is a uh, polynomial of 16th degree in these 16 variables. And it's, and it's the product of those variables plus the others and so on. It's kind of interesting, right? Um, so. If you, we interpret now these um, products here as um, subsets. And if I were to take the derived design with respect to say B, that's the same thing as taking the derivative of this polynomial with respect to B, right? So, so this is a language that we've lost. I think we should go back and reread um, some of this old literature. All right, but let's go back. Let's do it in modern language here. So 
if I take um, any symbol, let's say F, and I take the three items in, the, in that column that contains F and in the row that contains F, I'm going to write down those six elements as a six element subset. And it's pretty easy to see that they form a biplane. Uh, if I have, if I look at two elements in the same row, let's say G and H, well, they're with the center F, and, and they're also would be in the, the, the six, the hexad determined by E. And if they were, um, let's say, two that were not in the same row and in different diagonals, say F and L, then the two opposite, let's say G and K, then the two opposite corners, F and L, would make centers that determine blocks that contained G and K. You guys probably all know that. But what you might not know is that you can also get all the, the ovals, all the um, maximal set of points that contain, um, should say no collinear, no collinear pair, right? No, no collinear triple. Yeah, you, you can find the, 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 you find the maximal set of points that contain no collinear triple. So the ovals are the four corners of rectangles. So you take two rows and two columns, that determines a rectangle. And the transversals. So if I take all the ovals together with all the box of the biplane, then every triple is contained in exactly one of those. It's either contained, um, so these are going to contain the three element sets. These guys are going to contain the three element sets that are not collinear, and these contain the ones that are collinear. So that's pretty cool. There's a nicer way to look at this, I think, um, of course. Um, you look at the complete bipartite graph, and you take all of the subgraphs isomorphic to the two disjoint stars. That makes the biplane. You take all the subgraphs isomorphic to the to the to a uh, four cycle, and you take all the um, subgraphs that um, are a matching, and and that makes exactly one of these designs. And it's and you can see it in a paper that I wrote with um, Dean Hoffman. In fact, all biographical designs of lambda equals one are there in that paper. There's another paper that we wrote on graphical designs with um, Schwinard and Kramer. Um, so if you, if you take on um, six points, you, you take all the matchings and you take all the um, stars, you get a two design, a 2-15351, and you can add a point infinity to those, and then all add all the um, four cycles, and add all the pairs of disjoint triangles, then the edges as the points of your design, will, and these being the blocks, will make um, uh, 316461, the same one, but different way to look at it. Okay, so let's look at V equals 20. So in, 19, in the 1980s, late 1980s, um, maybe even to the early, well, late, late, mid to late 1980s, everybody was working on the projected plane of order 10. You would go down to Florida and you see all of the Charlie's students laying around the pool trying to construct orthogonal Latin squares, right? And, a Latin squares of order 10. So even I, in my PhD thesis, I worked on the projected plane of order 10. And I think Doug, well, he did projected, he did um, orthogonal Latin squares of order six, right? Anyway, so if a projected plane of order 10 existed, then there would exist, and, and if it existed, and there also exists an extension to a three design, a 3 one 12, 12 one then you could find two blocks of size 12 
the, whose um, symmetric difference was 20 points. It's, it's not a hard argument, it's, it's in my thesis. Um, you then look at how all the other blocks intersect those 20 points. They intersect them in either two, four, or six. Twos don't cover triples, but the fours and sixes were all gonna, will all cover all the triples each exactly once. And so therefore, um, if, if this guy existed, then there would have to exist as 3 2461. So I was in Ed Asmus' um, office, and he recommended that I work on this problem, and it became um, part of my PhD thesis, the, the third chapter. And I worked out by hand all the possible transitive automorphism groups that such a design could have, and all of the designs. But I didn't publish it because Lamb, Thiel, and Swierowitz in 1989 showed that a predicted plane of order 10 didn't exist, and I just didn't get around to publishing it in time. However, Selwick, well, Asmo's student, did publish it. And I only found that recently while looking for this talk. It's really hard to Google search on biplanes and semi-biplanes. You get all this information about aircraft. And it's really hard to find, it's just, ugh. But anyway, I found that paper. Ooh. So here's the truth. Um, I, we exa I examined, or we examined, and I should say that uh, Spiros, uh, I thought I had, should have Spiros help me check the group theory, and then he decided that he wanted to write programs um, duplicating mine, so he did it all in Florida, and I did this all in Michigan, and he wrote his programs using APL, I use um, C and Bash scripts, and we both are using Naughty, and he has a version of the Dancing Links program, Knus Dancing Links program that one of his students wrote. I have the one that's in Helsinki, it's Kaski, and I, thank you. I can't pronounce the name. Um, so I, I use that version. Anyway, that, those are very quick. Anyway, so we, we if, if, of course, if you have a design that has a transitive group, it contains a minimal transitive group. So Spiros' student, Michael Epstein, Epstein at Colorado, has access to magma, and he can get me all the minimal transitive groups that I need, or let me know if a group, all the minimal transitive subgroups of a particular group, and so on. So he's answering all the group theory questions for us. Um, and so I can look at all the transitive groups, I can run over every thing, and, I, and it turns out there is exactly three transitive ones of these designs um, with these various groups. These are not special in terms of having the axads be a symmetric biplane, a biplane, or um, a pairwise balanced incomplete block design, um, except for this one. I might be able to find a nice description of that to keep Marco happy. He likes explicit, pretty descriptions because I can think of A5 acting on the five choose two, well, on the, the 20 edges of the complete directed graph, and maybe I can build it that way, except I was finding that I would need half orbits because it's not the symmetric group. And anyway, I didn't think it was worth writing down. Um, here they are. Marco, you can check these, make sure they're correct. Um, so the group generators and base blocks. So let's move on to 22 points. On 22 points, there's a unique um, semi-biplane, and it's the double of the Paley biplane. The Paley biplane is constructed by developing the quadratic residues mod 11, and then um, Dan Hughes and Dickey um, have this construction. If you put in the incidence matrix as transpose and the two identity matrix, that will become the incidence matrix for a semi biplane um, on 22 points of block size six. So you can get it that way. Um, it can also be obtained by developing this base block by the group G um, acting on, well, the X's are mod 11 and the subscripts are mod two. And here are the generators. It's the dihedral group of order 11. 
uh, of degree 11, sorry. And so there are up to isomorphism seven transitive ones of these. Three are special and their hexads form the um, symmetric biplane and may be obtained by developing these base blocks um, with respect to the group I mentioned on the previous slide. And these are the four non-special ones. And I also wrote the base blocks in terms of that group. Okay, so let's move on. To, uh, oh, the automorph the full automorphism groups are, are for, for all of them, except for design number three, which is one of the symmetric biplane ones, the third one, um, have the dihedral group. The other one, a bit larger, has um, the Forbinius group of on 11 points of degree 11. So it's generated by that. OK. On, oh, I should go back just a little. No, this is good. Um, on 26 points, it turns out now to be 332 non-isomorphic transitive, uh, I should say one dash 2666 designs that do not cover triple twice. There's, a, there's exactly one that is a group divisible pairwise balanced design. There's only one that's special. And this is this, this you might recognize this. Um, Group divisible, um, well, it's 26, so it's got to be 2 times 13. So you take a Steiner triple system of order 13, you give weight 2, and that makes this. And these are the association scheme parameters. Let's see. So the, 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 the PBD, the one, this PBD will extend to 6, 9 isomorphic. Um, special, so transitive 3-26461 designs. And um, three of them have the cyclic group of order 26 as their full automorphism group, and three have um, the split extension of C26 and C3. So there's only six special ones there. Okay, now, okay, so here they are. 28 points, okay. 28 points, there are 854 9 isomorphic transitive 1-2866 designs that do not cover a triple twice. Um, exactly three have this group divisible gizmo. So this is on uh, 28 points. You can build one of these. Um, by taking a 3DD of type two to the seventh and then giving weight two to that to get four times seven, 28 points. And one of them has uh, the symmetric biplane on 28 points. Okay, so. Here's the horrible story. Um, there are only three, 30 minimal transitive groups on 28. There are 30 minimal transitive groups on 28, but only four of them can be automorphism. The automorphism group of a 3-28461. I know this just by computation. Um, so I can calculate the number of nine isomorphic extensions of each one of the possible um, geometric hexads, and I've got get zero extensions of this one. I have two of that and eight of this. Now notice that this, it could have been possible that this eight plus four added up to less than 12, because it could be possible that the full automorphism group of one of these designs contained both C4 across C14 and F8, but it doesn't, so it's 12. And there's an infinite number of these. Well, there are 3,565,490 inequivalent extensions of this thing. And I haven't been able to figure out how to do non-isomorphism, even with naughty. I'll grab, I, I grab, I thought I'd break it up into small pieces. I grabbed the first 10,000 of these, ran naughty on them, 
they're all nice non-isomorphic. I grab the next 10,000, they're all non-isomorphic. I grab the next 10,000, they're all non-isomorphic. I grab the next 10,000, 980 of them are non-isomorphic. And so there's some variant in that, but it's going to take me forever to do that computation. So I'm thinking, Charlie and Jeff, when I write this paper, maybe I'll just skip V equals 28. <laughs> maybe I'll put in more details on the other ones. I don't know. I'm not going to do V equals 32. Is Jonathan here? Yeah, why am I not going to do V equals 20, 32? Put you on the spot this time. Because there's two damn many groups on 32 points. So I, I, I guess the question is, when can a geometry be enclosed with quadruples to form a, to form a three design? Maybe that's the real question. Maybe we could find uh, necessary and sufficient conditions, or at least necessary conditions, or sufficient conditions, um, for when that's true. We have to figure out what we mean by geometry. And maybe we don't really mean quadruples. Maybe we mean some other kind of sets. Maybe we really want to know, when can the set system X be a subconfiguration of this, of a system of type Y? And then we need to specify enough conditions so that we can solve the problem. Right? Okay. So I want to thank you.